and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. In the news this week, Home Secretary John Reid remains under pressure for his prison sentencing policy. For instance, this week a paedophile was set free who three months ago might have gone to prison. Oh well, swings and roundabouts. <laughs> It is now standard police procedure to ask the suspects, do you have a criminal record? And if they say yes, to ask, do you have any idea where it is? <laughs> Denying that new super casinos were a bad thing, a government spokesman insisted that they would not represent a tax on the poor. Adding, no, no, you're thinking of scratch cards. <laughs> Church leaders have condemned the super casinos, saying gambling offers a false hope to the impoverished and the people should instead be putting all their faith into a shiny, beardy man who lives on a cloud. <laughs> Blackpool lost out in their bid for the super casino. This is the worst news to hit the town since Joe Pasquale extended his summer season. <laughs> right. A duck in America has come back from the dead twice. After first being shot by hunters, revived after two days in a fridge, it then stopped breathing on the operating table as they repaired its wing and had to be revived with an oxygen mast. Its condition was later described as delicious. <laughs> Joining me tonight are six of the country's top comedy performers, Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne, Russell Howard and Frankie Ball, Hugh Dennis and Gina Yashere. Welcome to the show. First round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of this week's top tabloid target, John Reed, with some cabinet colleagues. <laughs> but what does RIPS stand for? I was thinking Reed impersonates Pope successfully. Unless <laughs> <laughs> you look at Prescott, is it Reed interrupts Prescott's sleep? <laughs> is it Reed imagining Prescott's sex life? <laughs> From left to right, right idiot, plonker, shagger. <laughs> Is it Reed invents prison statistics? <laughs> Would he invent a statistics as bad as they once? <laughs> <laughs> really we don't Reed... know where they are. We're jammed. We're very good. Uh, Is it Reed in prison's scandal? That's exactly what it is. Well done, Ed Byrne. Very good. Now... <laughs> The answer I was looking for was read in prison scandal, although, frankly, shambles or shock would have worked just as well. It refers to the latest problems at the Home Office. With the prisons at bursting point, the Home Secretary is being criticised for requesting softer sentencing to ease overcrowding, on top of his department's failure to keep track of hundreds, literally hundreds, of serious offenders. How has... I can't say that enough, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> They're everywhere. Who knows where they are? <laughs> get them hundreds oh! of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got one. How has John Reed dealt with the problem of overcrowded prisons? He's uh, at least the paedophiles. He has. <laughs> mm, you're the ones who do it less harm. You, go, go, go. <laughs> the problem is they say that with paedophiles, we can never really make the punishment fit the crime. Could we dress the paedophiles up as Morris dancers so that they have bells on, the kids will know when they're nearby? <laughs> And beautifully, real Morris dancers will get beaten up for being paedophiles. <laughs> so, there are, there are, apparently there's over 300 sex offenders have gone missing. They're on the register and have gone missing and they don't know where they are. And they say well, part of the reason why some of them go missing is because they give such vague addresses. They're allowed to give... There's one guy whose address was down as a tent near the leisure centre. <laughs> then, this is true, he changed his address to simply the woods. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just it's not just paedophiles though, is it? Actually, he's being done for, no. because there are because they are reducing sentences and stuff. And all, essentially, what they have done is they've introduced a January sale to the prison service. <laughs> it's like you know, murder used to be life. Now six months. <laughs> PBH <laughs> was six years. Now a week. <laughs> Fraud. You go absolutely free. <laughs> Are you trying to say that the Home Office is like renovating a house and you pull back the wallpaper and you discover problems behind there, but I've renovated a couple of houses, I've never pulled back the wallpaper and found a paedophile in the plaster, right? <laughs> <laughs> Was one of the solutions they're thinking of doing is apparently the Swedish system where yes, yes. you get found guilty, right, but you don't get straight to court, they wait, right, they wait until there's a space in prison. It's called the one-in, one-out system. You queue to go to prison. <laughs> that 
That seems a very British way of sorting things out, doesn't it? <laughs> you hear this little voice going, OK, cell number four. <laughs> Well, it'd be, it'd be more like some sort of really grim <coughs> Argos. And Argos is relatively grim at the best of times. <laughs> but a really, really grim Argos, where instead of getting some sort of cheap barbecue set, you actually got banged up for six months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Couldn't we just build a wall round Liverpool? <laughs> You, you could, you could, of course, take the, the Northern Ireland example, because your, your prison, the reason that you don't have any space in prison is that you imprison so many people. The rate of imprisonment in this country is the highest so in you, Western Europe. Yeah, you, you know, that... No, 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 because no, as a, as a counterexample, in Ireland, it's, it's half the rate of We're in Ireland where you haven't lived for years. <laughs> <laughs> That's not... And you don't like it, Derek, go back, <laughs> you know. <laughs> The fact that Ireland has a low rate of imprisonment is not in any way related to the fact that I'm not there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if I was still there, it wouldn't shoot up. Like, people wouldn't, I wouldn't be forcing people into jail. No, but when you say you, you mean you British people, as no, opposed to this... you who live here. Because if it's you who live here, it's we who live here. <laughs> <laughs> we point, who live here, the point... taking their jobs. That's not uh, <laughs> You're making us all look bad. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for blowing your cover, Paddy. <laughs> right? I, 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 well, anyway, the point is, in this country, you, we, L, all of us. <laughs> no, not, no, no, not Nigerians. Not, we're, not we're, the Nigerians. Not They're not involved at all yeah, in this people, situation. You people, you right? people. Right? Everyone bar the Nigerians, right? <laughs> more <laughs> more <laughs> people are put into jail in this country than anywhere else in, in Western Europe. Whereas in Northern Ireland, interestingly, the rate is around about half that, right? What they've done brilliantly in order to free up space, they've simply declared everyone a political prisoner and let them out. So what you should do is declare war on Nokia say, right? And anyone who steals a mobile phone is a prisoner of conscience and should be allowed out. Right? <laughs> it is a purely financial thing, really, isn't it? That, that is essentially the problem here with the prison services, that it's, it's too expensive and, you know, there isn't money for it. So what they should do is put cameras in the prisons and broadcast it as a reality TV show. <laughs> You'd make a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a criminal, let me out of here. <laughs> and there's extra deterrent, isn't there, for them not actually escaping, because if they do escape, they'll be interviewed by Davina McCall. <laughs> <laughs> not a bad idea. What new initiatives are the Home Office uh, coming up with? Uh, they've got an initiative, haven't they, to do a database of sh people's shoe prints. People's shoe prints, oh, yeah. yeah. Which isn't as daft as it sounds, because from a shoe print, they can tell uh, what size you are, they can tell what height you are, what weight you are and various other stuff about you, which is why when I'm doing a crime, I al always wear high heels and carry a bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you were a burglar, surely just before you commit the crime, you just got to pop on novelty slippers and you're fine. So they're like, who are we looking for? Looks like a gruffalo. <laughs> It's another clown. Exactly. Why are so many clowns? They've just got a database full of Nike trainers and like, okay, so burglars are wearing Nike trainers and maybe the odd pair of Reebok classics. I mean, it's oh, you can easily guess without the need of a database. He was probably wearing a Burberry cap and a sovereign. <laughs> What is that? The, 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 the database, Gina, isn't a work of what kind of shoes criminals wear. Uh, that's, not the, that's not the major interest. It's, yeah, not, like, it's, it's not like there's a massive marketing opportunity but here. All they're have is if a we could only find nice. out what toothpaste they use, <laughs> this is our audience. We've got to go after do the criminals. Think, do you think the fact that Nike trainers are the most popular shoe for burglars, which they are, aren't they? they it's like about 80 percent. And Nike, has that got anything to do with the slogan "Just do it"? <laughs> I'm going to have to wrap that round. Ladies <laughs> at the end of that round, the winners are Gina, Hugh and Frankie! <laughs> the next round is called Between the Lines and features Hugh and Frankie. Would mm. you please make your way to the press pit? In this round, one of them takes on the role of a person in the news addressing the media, while the other translates what they really mean. Frankie, you are US President George W. Bush making a State of the Union address. <laughs> Hugh, you will tell us what he really means. <laughs> My fellow Americans, <laughs> many people are surprised that I've committed another 20,000 troops in Iraq. I was surprised. <laughs> I was only trying to order my Tesco shopping online. I admit that there are similarities between Iraq and Vietnam. I think they both have a border with Switzerland. <laughs> Some say that the Iraq war is unwinnable, but not my cl
closest advisors? Chuck Norris. <laughs> Vin Diesel. <laughs> and the animals of Farthing Wood. People said that our soldiers would be coming back in body bags, but that hasn't happened. Some of them have come back in shoe boxes. <laughs> Thanks to me, the war on terror will be won. By Al-Qaeda. <laughs> Soon the world will be a much safer place. I'm retiring in 18 months. <laughs> I remain firmly opposed to abortion. <laughs> Even though I'm a great advert for it. <laughs> well done, you are thank you. Now we play a round called Super Casino, Make a Joke Roulette. <laughs> this game <laughs> involves Gina, Andy, Frankie and Russell. So if you can make your way to the performance area, please. It's our stand-up challenge with a random news generator containing the bank of topics. We spin the wheel, and when it stops, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel for the first topic. And it is parenting. Who wants to come in on that? Gina. Um, I'm not a big advocate of parenting. Um, <laughs> you can obviously tell I haven't got kids. Um, I love kids, I just love holidays a lot more. That's all. Because um, <laughs> kids are expensive. They are, they're expensive. Christmas has, has gone, uh, I'm glad it has, because kids do not believe in Santa anymore. But then having said that, I didn't believe in Santa either. Uh, but that's because my mum's Nigerian! Um, <laughs> there was no way she was going to let a fat white man take the credit... <laughs> ..for all her hard work. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, OK, let's spin the wheel again. Subject is the environment. Who's going to come in on that one? Oh, Frankie. <laughs> Stephen Hawking has just come out and said that global warming might turn the earth into a cloud of boiling gas. That's Hawking for you. I think I could have worked that out if I just sat about in my arse all day. <laughs> Ryanair are getting a hard time from the government because they're not doing enough to combat global warming. And you think, well, air travel isn't good for the environment. And surely no one has done more to put people off flying than Ryanair. <laughs> nothing... Nothing punctures that James Bond image quite like being sold peanuts by a stewardess who looks like she survived Hiroshima. <laughs> There's no way that Ryanair are as big a polluter as China, although Ryanair do have a worse record on human rights. <laughs> Thank you very much, thank you, Bob. OK, that leaves us with the entire other side of the room, Andy and Russell. <laughs> Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> the next topic is the body beautiful. Who wants to come in on that? <laughs> oh. um, we come in all shapes and sizes, don't we? Like, good example, my mum has recently joined an under five foot club, you know. I'm not lying, you haven't seen a prettier sight until you've seen a load of tiny ladies sat around a the table, their feet barely touching the floor. <laughs> sat there, because they're all under five foot, convinced they've got the same things in common. They haven't, right? The only thing they've got in common, when you hoover near them, they don't have to lift their legs. That's pretty much it, right? And there's a really amazing old lady there called Sue, who's about 80, and she's got a prosthetic hand. Now, we got chatting, right, and when she first went to school, the state of prosthetics was so poor, she actually went to school with a full-size man hand. <laughs> As if your first day at school isn't terrifying enough. <laughs> We're gonna get bullied! <laughs> there's your hand. You'll grow into it. What do you mean I'll grow into it? I'm a little girl, I'm not Gordon Banks. What's that? <laughs> well done, Russell Howard. And Andy, that's who you've been left with. OK, it's legislation. <laughs> Away you go. <laughs> now, New Labour have apparently created up to 2,000 new offences since they've been in power. You apparently can now get fined if you park more than 50 centimetres away from the kerb. Now, I personally don't mind this. 
50 centimetres is almost two feet. If you can't park within two feet of the curb, <laughs> I don't think you should be driving. Because <laughs> let's face it, if you've parked further than two feet from the curb, you've not bloody parked. <laughs> you've stopped in traffic <laughs> and pissed off. <laughs> I'm going to give the points in that round to Gina and Frankie. Everyone come and sit down. <laughs> Time now for if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board, six categories. Gina, what would you like? I'm going to go for social affairs. OK, social affairs. <laughs> the answer is 265 million. Gina, what is the question? Is it how much will the London Olympics cost each of us? <laughs> Is it how many viewing figures would Top Gear have got if it had been Jeremy Clarkson who had apparently been involved <laughs> in a serious crap? <laughs> <laughs> Is it uh, uh, how many ways could a dyslexic spell onomatopoeia? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, what is the current chart position of Peter Andre's drum and bass Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, is it how many times did I say as a kid, bird's eye potato, waffles, the waffly versatile? <laughs> is, it, is it Sylvester Stallone's final movie will be called Rocky Watts? <laughs> According to the Daily Mail, how many Polish people are living in Hammersmith? <laughs> How much money would the BBC have to pay Tom Cruise if I made the joke I'd like to make <laughs> about him and John Travolta? <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, how, how much is going to be invested in the super casino? Yes, it is actually very good. Well wow. done, Hugh. The question I was looking for is how much will now be invested in developing the site of Britain's first super casino? This is the news of the city of Manchester. The 1629 <coughs> Cider won the race to become the site of the country's first mm. Las Vegas style super casino. £265 million will be spent in a rundown area of the city. How ironic is it, by the way, and how much of a lesson about gambling is that it wasn't the favourite. Lots of people put money on Blackpool and the Dome, <laughs> and they lost money. <laughs> Surely that's as neat a lesson about gambling as you're going to get. Like. I was sorry, sorry for that. Sorry for that. Sorry for that. Yeah. Yeah. Because the Blackpool that. wanted to be, didn't they? They said they wanted to be the Las Vegas of Britain. Now, they were always going to struggle to be that, weren't they? <laughs> Las Vegas, some of the best hotels in the world where they've got a volcano that goes off every 15 minutes. Blackpool, some of the most disappointing B&Bs I've ever <laughs> been to, where the hot water goes off every 15 minutes. <laughs> I feel sorry for Blackpool for many, many reasons, not least because Manchester is the most regenerated city in the world. There isn't a part of mm. Manchester which hasn't been regenerated in the last ten years. They have to knock down some of the old regeneration <laughs> just to make space for the casino. Blackpool deserves as big a kicking as possible. It's the one town in Britain where I've got chlamydia from fish and chips. <laughs> It was never, ever going to be Blackpool. and never stood a chance, because in gambling, the principle is, in a casino, at the end of the night, you exchange your chips for cash. And in Blackpool, it's the other way around. Because, you know, you can, you can win £100,000 and have it mugged off you all in the one night. <laughs> <laughs> New Labour, they're always saying, aren't they, they want joined-up government, they're not building enough prisons, and now they go and build a casino when it's supposed to lead to debt and eventually prison. Why not build half casino, half off prison, <laughs> and as soon as they get in trouble, they can just cross the corridor, and there they are. <laughs> the thing that's rubbish about it, it's that's all like it's all the slot machines and stuff like that. There's no skill. Surely there's a skill to poker or something like that. It's just, the, yeah, it's just it's like just deal or no deals ruin this country. Do you know what I mean? It's horrific. Just no skill. It's like deal or no deal may as well just be called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire for Thick People. <laughs> so, do you know anything? No. Can you open a box? Yes. <laughs> Some of them can't actually open a you, box. You, know, you oh, have Jesus. to know the numbers from 1 to 20 uh, as well and be able to identify them by their symbols uh, and points. Uh, I'll, I'll get Mick to do it, please. I always think it's weird when, when Noel Edmonds, when he's, he's walking around and pacing the floor like a creepy uncle. Yeah. You know, and, he, and he keeps saying things like, Oh, you're playing a very shrewd game here. <laughs> well, very shrewd. I'm pointing at a box going, Open that one. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you shrewd man. <laughs> Spray on trousers, you creepy lizard. <laughs>
the bit that creeps me with dealers generally is the fact that they all pretend to be friends. Yeah, that yeah. really gets on my nerves. <laughs> there. there you go. Good luck, Jim. Oh, this is for you. This is for you. Like, uh, oh, be thanks. You're yeah, a yeah, To be yeah. honest, Dan, to be honest, that's what I hate about this show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, uh, the other, the other part of the gambling. <laughs> <laughs> I asked not be godfather to my child. That's what's funny yeah. about that line. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, super casinos are terrible because, I mean, people mm. are too vulnerable to cope with this. I mean, people in Britain are addicted to eBay. <laughs> How are you going to cope with million pound prize money if you're up till three in the morning trying to buy second hand pyjamas? <laughs> Rowan Williams, the Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, said that the casinos will contain imprisonments of the soul. Which sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> right in the middle of the casino, there's a soul prison of some description. <laughs> like that thing in Superman 2. It's <laughs> 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 like a, a hologram like... of James Brown. Welcome to the soul prison. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of obsessions, what did 3,986 people in Britain uh, have removed last year? Oh, Ooh. is this man boobs? Yeah. No, it's not man boobs, no. Was oh, it, I thought uh, this was fat. A, no? it, was just... it, was, it was fat, yes, yeah. it was fat. That's, that, that's the amount of people who chose to have li a liposuction or liposuction. Uh -huh. was almost 4,000 people in the last year chose to have liposuction. The thing I love about uh, liposuction, you always see them, you know, like in Bella magazine, those uh, magazines you see in the doctors, it's always that, my horror plastic surgery story. It's always that, like, I went in for a tummy tuck and came out with a bum for a face. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit odd, though, that men... I mean, it surprised me that so many men did it. It was about 5% of these people were, Oops, were blokes. Yeah, yeah. And that really surprised me, because I would have thought a, a major difference between the sexes is that women are generally worried about how they look. And men, even the elephant man, probably woke up in the morning, looked in the mirror and went, yeah, looking good. <laughs> I mean, it's just not, it doesn't happen. No, to, you know, you fantasy went, yeah. yeah. Looking good. Killer! Time to check it. I'm no looker, but I'm funny. Yeah. 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 <laughs> your man boobs. Having your man boobs done is a very sort of decadent kind of stage <laughs> to get to, though, isn't it? That's why when I had mine done, I donated them to an African transsexual. <laughs> Well, they, they, the, man, just, the man boo statistic, just so there are 90,000 instances of cosmetic plastic surgery that go on during the year. There are 177 moobs, right? <laughs> well, all the papers ran. 177 well, moobs? No, 354 moobs, okay. I suppose. Yeah, 177 yeah. operations to remove the moobs. Like by one guy one. Just hey, that one. what about this one? one. <laughs> 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 what was supposed to do here? <laughs> 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 That's lovely. Doink, 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 actually, right around. I wasn't going to pig noise. Yeah. Anyway, so. These statistics, though, they all come, don't they, from yeah. the British Association of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons. Now, given their major thing is to do with breast surgery, isn't brilliant that the abbreviation for them is BAPS? <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic, isn't it? The statistics after this week were that all types of plastic surgery went up uh, significant numbers of percentage points, except for one, which went yes, down. Yes, eyelid know surgery. Uh, not eyelid I mean, surgery. What, what's that? No, what's what? the whole thing about eyelid surgery? I, well, you no idea. What what that? One? I have no idea. I mean, Why are you can asking me? I can understand, like, I don't know, maybe a bloke having eyelid... I mean, more blokes are having eyelid surgery. I can only imagine that they're having it done to keep their eyes open while their women are talking about commitment or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah! <laughs> The only it? type of, of, of uh, cosmetic procedure that's become less popular are having your ears corrected. Uh -huh. Apparently getting this, the thing pinned back, suddenly no one wants to do that anymore. I've had that. Have you had that done? Yes. I was born with what they call bat ears. <laughs> nice of them. <laughs> and, uh, I, I had them it? done and the reason that my earlobes are so incredibly weird was that the stitches fell out and the surgeon said, oh, you know, I'll, I'll have you back and I'll redo that. And he then died. <laughs> Do you also well, manage to well, navigate you your life. way then? Yeah. <laughs> Do you navigate your way around by radar? <laughs> Thanks for helping with the pain here. <laughs> Winners of that round are Frankie, Hugh and Gina. Now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you could make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK. The first subject tonight is... What a TV chef would never say. So, that's the bird plucked and stuffed. All that remains is to kill it. <laughs> Welcome to One Fat Lady. <laughs> I 
And here, what you want to do is put a little bit of the brown mixture in the tin and then sprinkle a little bit of hash on the top of it. <laughs> well, <laughs> these Korean meatballs really are the dog's bollocks. <laughs> If you're wondering how to get the perfect skin on your parsnips, then you're mental. <laughs> Hello, I'm Delia Smith, and today we're going to cook a panda. <laughs> are, we, are I invisible in this fucking jacket? <laughs> I think you... So, I've marinated it for half an hour, seared it for 15 seconds, and now I'm drizzling it on my buttocks. <laughs> you just need two things to make this dish. What you need is a takeaway menu and a phone. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight on Russian cookery, cyanide, polonium, and a crab stuffed with explosives. <laughs> It's not going to be worth it now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is bad thing to say at the opening of the new Wembley Stadium. Is it just me or does it all feel a bit wobbly? <laughs> Due to a double booking, England's first match is against Simply Red. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, James Blunt! <laughs> Welcome to the 2008 Cup Final. So if you could all make your way to the coaches, we're on our way to Cardiff. <laughs> <laughs> and all for the same price as building a rope ladder between the Earth and Jupiter. <laughs> Can Mr. Bin Laden report to lost property, please? <laughs> Mr. Bin Laden. And who knows, maybe here, one day, with the right linesman, England can cheat their way to another World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe, one day, with the right bunch of hooligans from Scotland, <laughs> these goalposts can get trashed all over again. <laughs> Cost £100 million to demolish Wembley. If you'd had your last game against Scotland, we'd have done it for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to leave it that, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to leave it that. The winners of that round are Russell Ed and Andy. Everyone come back. <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne, and Russell Howard. Commiserations to Frankie Moore, Hugh Dennis, and Jeannie Ashery. Thank you for watching. I'm Darwin. Good night. Mock the Week is back next Thursday at 10. Tomorrow night at 10, Davina McCall joins Paul Merton for Room 101 on BBC Two. Comedy over on BBC Three now in Man Stroke Woman.